Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. Sometimes when there's no one at home, I like to go in the garden, cover myself in soil and pretend I'm a potato. What have you got today for us, Mike? Well, I've got the story about what the perfect man looks like. Oh, not me, Pops, then. Yeah. Mm. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at The Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us, The TV for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as the names of people have reached out and sang, Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza, go along the bottom of the screen, we go to Lee and the showbiz. <laughs> Were you around when Frankie Goes to Hollywood first came on the music scene? In 1982. Well, no, kind of 1985-ish. Oh, yes, I, I was two. You were two. Mm. Oh, did you, do you remember them? No, I was no. two. No, OK. Do you remember being two years old? Yes. What was it like with dinosaurs as pets? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Bitch. Um, so, we've had lots of kind of recent biopic films made of rock stars. We've had the Elton John one. Why are you laughing? I don't know why I'm sat like this. I don't know. <laughs> Elton John, we've had Pretty Mercury. Yeah, yeah. There's an Amy Winehouse one in the works. Okay. Lots of different ones. There's a Barbie one. There's a Barbie, but then she wasn't a rock star. Well, yeah, Barbie the rock, rock star. Barbie. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, Frankie Goes to Hollywood is going to get their own biopic film treatment. Really? Very ex yeah. Ooh. So it's all about... Two tribes going to war. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. It's all about... They're kind of run up to making the hit single "Relax," which is very, very rude. Um, Why is it rude? Because it's all about dirt. It's all about not dirtiness. Because we don't sex shame here, but it's all about sex. Relax. Don't do it when you want to suck to it. I don't get that. Can Relax. Don't it do me? it when you want to come. Lyrics of your life. So we've got we've we've got a picture of them, of them then and now. Okay. Um, they recently reformed to perform at the opening. Um, ceremony of Eurovision in Liverpool. There's a lot of hair in that first picture. Not so much now. But I'm, I'm, there's some choices that have been made in the hair. Well, Holly Johnson's the, the lead singer. Mm -hmm. Paul Rutherford is the gentleman next to him in the kind of purplish top, who, who, was, who, who were both gay. I don't know who the other three were. Um, One's wearing a CCCP top. Which yeah. I believe is Soviet Russia. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so it's the film is called Relax, mm -hmm. and it's based on um, Holly Johnson's memoir of his name, which is called um, Memoir of His Life, not his okay. just name, A Bone in My Flute, um, which this is, this is Holly Johnson now. This is a <laughs> gallery chuckling at Bone in My Flute. Um, I get it. I think it's about hard on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so... Um, it's it's going to also be directed by the actual guy who directed the video for Relax. Okay. So, yeah. But so the dead. exciting thing is, yeah. is that It's a Sin Callum's Scott Howells Ooh. is going to be playing Holly Johnson. Nice. Um, yeah. So, we, so... We've, we've got so we've got a picture. So at the moment, mm -hmm. Callum is in Cabaret mm -hmm. um, in London. So that's the character that he plays in Cabaret, and that's how he looks. When he's in your in, dreams. No, he's got a top on. Oh, he's got a top on, yeah. Um, so there's going to be lots of their actual... I mean, they weren't around for a particularly long time, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, about two years. Oh, okay. They're like massive hit single and albums and then kind of just disappeared. Um, but the, it, it's going to be... Because obviously Frankie Goes to Hollywood were a very gay band. Okay. Not all the members were, were gay, but Holly Johnson and Paul Rutherford were very out gay men at the mm -hmm. time. Um, unlike George Michael. Unlike George Michael. Um, apparently, I, rem I, I really remember this, when it was released in 1984 and got to number six in the chart, the BBC banned it because they said it was obscene, which obviously made people buy it even more. Mm -hmm. Frankie says relax t-shirts. Did you have one in size, a two-year-old, little two-year-old size? No. No. I'm quite. I'm genuinely looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to it as well because although I wasn't, you know, conscious of the work at the time, so like early '90s, looking back, mm. it had a big impact on me. Mm. Yeah. You crack off to the video. No. no. LL Cool J phenomenon. Oh yeah. Oh okay. At all. No release date as yet. Okay. It has all been signed. It has all been finalised. So they've agreed the date. Agreed the they date. Done, done the script. 
they're going to get to, to get it started. They're going to start, and then we'll find out about the release at some point. Yeah. What What else did you think I was referring to? I was just pointing a simile to the song. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, great. Um, have you ever wondered what RuPaul's house looks like? No. It'd be huge. Well, it is huge. Because his, his husband's minted. Well, they have two a homes. They have one ha home in LA mm -hmm. and one in, I want to say, Wyoming. <laughs> I, every time I think of it, I just think of but Alaska. But <laughs> Alaska. They do. Yeah. They, they have a... Anyway, he has opened the doors to his palatial Beverly Hills um, house for um, uh, Architectural Digest um, to show people around. So there's a there's an article in the magazine, and then there's a, a video online you can you can go and watch. Um, <sighs> I I have to say, it's a bit of me that that house. A bit. Yeah. Um, the thing that's upsetting me is the is the outfit that RuPaul is wearing. He's wearing something comfortable. He's wearing pajamas with money symbols all over it. Yeah, they're probably like the safe. I would imagine, or yeah. that kind of stuff. It's just a little bit. Tacky I, think, I, for my I don't life. know if it's. I think that's supposed to be ironic. You know, welcome to my house. Look at all the money I've got. I don't think it's. I'm still roof on the block. Uh huh. Um, now I love so so. This is so. The foot, so it's for decorative drama, the sleigh bells start ringing the moment one steps through the front door into a palatial powdery rose entry. You've had a powdery rose entry before, haven't you? Um, sweeping stairway with serious mommy very, dearest very red. vibes. That's like a it's like a prolapse bottom. On the, oh, on the no, ceiling, yeah, I've no. never looked at a prolapse and bottom. And then you go through to the jaw-dropping ballroom, a coupe de theatre crowned with an array of monumental disco balls and covered in photographs of divas on the order of Billie Holiday, Grace Jones, Eartha Kitt and Dorothy Dandridge. I love it. That is fantastic. That would be a bitch to dust. Well, he, he, I can't imagine RuPaul is on his step ladders with a feather but duster. No, but he'll have no. a team of he'll have a team of of, of failed team. drag queens <laughs> that have got, got eliminated first go round. So when Ball they get shot. eliminated first, he sends them round to dust his go his his, uh, his disco balls. Um, he talks about, sorry, in the video and in the article, he talks about his love of colour, particularly orange. And he says, if you're here on this planet, why not surround yourself by the things that make you happy? There is no orange in that picture. Not in that picture. That's... I, just, I love, by, I'm love, so far I'm yet to see any orange. Favourite well, I don't think orange. I've included any pictures of orange. In his kitchen is his orange. Okay. His office is orange. His okay. bedroom is orange. It's Ooh, orange, orange, orange. Right. Um, so he has, he has two massive walk-in wardrobes. This mm -hmm. is the RuPaul drag room okay. and then he has a, a RuPaul Charles boy dressing room okay. um, he also has um, like a glam room all that kind of outside with the fountains and stuff. The designer is called somebody called Martin Loris Bullard, and he said, This is the house of Rue, a mansion of style designed as the centre stage for the world's most famous celebrity drag queen. It's the ultimate runway for the supermodel of the world. Um, I could not imagine a more appropriate place for the universe's drag mother to hold court. Okay. It's a little bit over the top, but I would live there. Do you, are you a fan of American Dad? The cartoon. I do like it on occasion. Occasion. It's been around for a long time. Very long time. So recently, the character Roger the Alien... Love Roger. ...has been inducted into the um, the Drag Race Hall of Fame. Okay. So um, to mark its 350th episode, mm. Roger was deemed part of drag history okay. due to his arrange, array of stunning outfits, wigs and dresses and aliases. Mm -hmm. so, so it was Trixie Mattel... And um, Trinity the Tuck. The, the, so it was all part of um, a telethon in, in America, which um, a lot of the drag queens took part in. So it was part of a, a telethon mm -hmm. that a lot of drag queens took part in to raise money for the Trevor Project over in America, which is a, um, a charity that helps support LGBTQ plus young people. Mm -hmm. um, so they said, the face stamped, the look stunning, the body, we need to give her your surgeon's number joke. Um, they gave her the name of um, uh, Gelatin Lychee. That's her drag name. That's okay. Roger's drag name. Okay. Um, kind of Roger is the kind of highlight of that cartoon. I feel. I, I like Roger a lot. It does yeah. bring a lot of extra to the. Yeah, I, we, we've got we've got a Roger. 
here with us today. Uh, 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 absolutely. No expense. No expense. We've got our very own little Roger. Hi, Mike. What are you doing? Talk back. Say hello. Hi. Why are you being so rude? I think I think we have more pictures of Roger. We have more pictures of Roger. Yeah. So obviously on the top that's Roger not nude. Yes, as he as he kind nude. of um, um, he's not, well, yeah. He's got no clothes on his. And then there's a variety of his different disguises. He doesn't just dress in drag. He has a, a, a variety of different characters yes, and outfits that he wears. Most of them are, drag. but most of them are kind of like you know drag. So yeah, that, that's I, I, I'm fully on board with that. And that's the end of this week's show. Isn't news. Just say just say goodbye. Bye, mate. Thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to have something new in my nightmares. You're totally welcome. But stick around as next. It's Mike and the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get ready to be hourly assaulted as we go to Mike and the Buzz. Beauty standards perfection. Mm. Yeah. Now we know that the world has a, a, this ideal. It tries to project like what the perfect man and perfect woman should be, and it causes a lot of body dysmorphia. Mm. AI has got into into the act. I I'm disturbed by AI. Are you really? Because I because they I never know if it is real. I mean, if it says AI, uh -huh. then I go, oh, well, that's. But then if you just see a normal picture, and I think. Well, that's a person. But then they say, no, it's not. It's AI. And they go, well, I would never have guessed. Oh. Well, you find out when you turn up and go, oh, you know, this is not you in the picture, is it? It's like, no, it's Amstrad 74 on the desk. For those people that were born after the 80s, Amstrad was a type of computer. But Lee had to understand it. Um, so the, an AI has built a picture of the perfect man and the perfect, perfect woman. Has it? Would you like to see the picture of the oh, perfect Oh, you man? would indeed. Let's have a look then. So, according to AI, this is what a perfect man and a perfect woman look like. It looks very familiar, that, that one on the left, doesn't it? Well, the woman looks amazing with the glasses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not so sure about the man. Um, yeah. I don't know how my pictures ended up there. I don't know how it has either. Is that, is that, is that in Kuala Lumpur? It was. Well done, you. Well done, you. Well done, you. It's one of the good photos. So, yeah, oh, like, okay. Even though my head's a little bit shiny. Um, but, yeah. AI has actually generated that. That's the woman. Would you like to see what the actual pictures look like? Yeah. Okay, so the actual man and the actual woman that AI have generated. Mm -hmm. You look like this. He's my type. Really? Yeah. Also, after you've bummed him, do you want to grate some cheese on his jawline? It looks comfortable. I don't like it. I'd like to sit on it. She looks like one of those Port those 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 <laughs> those, porn stars. No, <laughs> those pictures from the seventies that you used to have on your walls. Everyone had them. I didn't have pictures on the seventies, <laughs> <laughs> but your family would have had those kind of like pictures of like very hyper realistic kind of. Usually they were blue because they were a bit alieny as well. Not over, you know. He his eyes are quite close together. He he look. He's got an, an essence of what's his face. I had a lot of work. Fromage. No, um, Zac Efron. Oh, okay. It's got that Zac Efron kind of Hemsworth jawline kind of vibe. So it's I, bit, I get why they've gone for it. It's a bit Superman. It's a bit... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very... It's very... <laughs> See, I'll have a go. Uh, yeah. yeah she's, she's pretty. Very Caucasian. Yes. Mm. That's the other thing people are saying. The only thing in the future is, is Caucasian people. Nobody else exists. Mm. It's actually built from um, pictures that people thought were saying were attractive. So it's used as an algorithm. Oh, okay. So what a lot of people are saying is it's highlighting the fact that beauty industry is also systemically racist. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was a shame because, you know, they are Caucasian men, Caucasian women. But what do they do with them? No, what would I they, do with them? No, what do they do with these images now? Is that it? That's it. It's just another unrealistic body standard to live up to. I have seen the other ones. There's another one going around where they, they're asking AI to create the typical person that lives in a particular area. Mm -hmm. So, like... Ireland or London or Brazil, and they're offensive as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's because it's learning. AI is still it's learning. learning. So it's learning how don't to like be offensive. Don't like the idea about that. Uh, you don't like the idea of things learning? No, I don't like the idea of AI learning because next, it already, it already Terminator. Does that. That's what will happen. It's more likely to be the Matrix. One of the, one of the others. Where you become a human battery. 
Do you know who Andre the Giant is? Yes, I who do. Is he? he he was an um and now I don't know if he was an actor or he was kind of like so back in Hollywood days of yore, uh-huh. he was like the person that they didn't they base Shrek on him? Okay. And wasn't he in James Bond? It's a James Bond. Yeah. He was like a James Bond bill. Was he Jaws? Oh, 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 oh. Did he play Jaws? <laughs> okay. Um, and he also wrestled. Yeah. A WWE wrestler. Yeah, seven foot tall. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's made headlines. How he? Yes. After being on a flight and made people sick. Oh, wow. By a giant poo. Oh. <laughs> he went into the toilet and phrases that have come out of, of people saying that the sounds coming out of the bathroom were unholy and concerning and went to town on the toilet. Um, he normally went to eats, town on it. He went to town on the toilet. Um, and after he left the, the bathroom, um, no one could see because the smell was that strong. People were throwing up. <laughs> People were crying. Crying. Goodness me, how crying. dramatic. It's just a turd. Not just a turd. He eats 20 pounds of food a day. Mm-hmm. Right. And he normally goes to the toilet before the plane because he knows how strong his evacuations are. Strong evacuation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a hefty amount of shite. Okay. Right. Um, to the point people were asking if they could get their air masks to turn on and stuff. Oh. I don't really know what else to say about that. Did he clog it up? No, he didn't clog it up. Because airplane, no toilet, afterwards. airplane toilets are small. You do courtesy flush, don't you? Courtesy flush? What's that? You're halfway through, you just give it a press. You've never shot a courtesy flush. So when you sat on the toilet and you're still defecating, yeah. you press it and... Give what flush. When it's midway out? Yeah, because you're just getting rid of the, some of the, the existing effluent. Do you have huge shits, Mike? Is that why you do a courtesy not, flush? Not, not huge, but sometimes... Substantial. Sometimes they're a bit strong. I'm uncomfortable now with this conversation. Can we move on to something else? <laughs> You'd like to move on to something else? Yeah. Why? Because because I don't know. You're it's concerned just about making... where we're going to go with this conversation next. I don't. I don't need to know where it's going. <laughs> I know where it's been. <laughs> no, I'm surprised you don't do a courtesy flush. No, no. Even when your partner's in the bathroom with you. But you have to reach behind you. It's uncomfortable. It's, you don't do the same arm. That's craziness. But you go with other arm. Do you know what's the worst thing ever is when you go to those toilets that have um, sensory flushes. You know when you put your hand when you've like finished and you go shh like that with your hand and then it flushes. Because if you lean back, <laughs> it flushes and it washes your bum. Flush, yeah. And then your ass is wet. <laughs> How far into the top? No, I'm about to change the subject now. Um, and if your ass is wet, why not share it with us on social media? It's at the Could TV. And that brings us nicely to our story of it's the week. It's wet right now, this very minute. <laughs> Send the picture. It's at Lee Robinson. <laughs> Massive cocks. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about them? Are we talking about penises or are we talking about birds? What do you think? N- never know with you. <laughs> Bird with a massive dick? <laughs> yes. Is it? No. no. <laughs> it's about a male chicken. Okay. Yeah. Who has been given an asbo? They're vicious though, cockerels, aren't they? Cockerels are vicious. Are they? Is yeah. There's a story there? No, they just are. How do you know they're vicious? Because they're because they're aggressive, because they're protecting their what do they call it? Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> They're like harem of chickens. Bitches. Is it a flock of chickens? Is it a herd of chickens? Is it a? Is it a? What is it? What is a chicken? What is a group of chickens? A, I know it's a gobble of geese. I don't know. A chicken. And they are very a flock. A conglomeration of chickens. A coop of chickens. A coop. Coop of chickens. They live in a coop. Yeah, we'll find that out. Well. We're not researching anything into that. But they are very aggressive. I've seen um, YouTube clips of, of like people like walking through and them chasing and like <laughs> you say, you've seen, you've watched. Watch YouTube clips of people being chased by loop, cocks. Well, you've, you've been watching a long list of There's people. there's a lot. There's you've more than you would it. think of. <laughs> How many hours did you spend watching people being chased by a boy chicken? About two days. <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was rooting for the chicken. <laughs> well, you might be rooting for this one because it's a noisy cock. Oh. Okay. Who's making a lot of noises, which is disturbing a famous neighbour, Ed Sheeran. Oh, no. But yeah, he's been given an asbo. So, Rory the cockerel. Okay. That's his name. Um, is very loud when he's cock a doodle doing. Cock a doodle doo! 
That's the noise to make. Anyway, um, very loud um, when he's doing a cockadoodle doo doesn't need a, a noise. Um, and to the point where his owners have been slapped with Nasbo because it's antisocial, because he'll do it before the crack. Oh. Okay. Yeah, if he cocks up at the crack, you need to make sure it's quiet. What, what have they done with it then? Do they, does it have to stay inside? Put it on a, put it on a, a, a ankle bracelet. Oh, tiny, teeny tiny one. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Look, yeah. Does it? So, how do they stop it from from crowing before? A... They're just keeping the cock inside. Just tape its beak shut. No, just keeping the cock inside. Okay. Yeah. Does, does um, Ed, has Ed, Ed, has Ed made any comment about this? Has Ed made any comment about yeah, this? Yeah, because it's like you know him. No, <laughs> has Mr. Shearer. <laughs> Mr. Shearer. Has Mr. Shearer Excuse made? Me, Mr. Shearer. Has, has, has he been to the? Please. Has he been to the papers and said, "I hate that cock." <laughs> So many things I could say. All of them would get me can in trouble. Can you eat? Can you eat cock rolls? You can eat cock, yeah. <laughs> and that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you, Mike, and your cock story. Stick around as coming up, we have the game of the week. <laughs> you are watching Chewing the Cod. This week we are going to be playing Ooza Kazoo, and that's one for our joy sucker. Well, mood hoover. Um, so it's 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 you, Mike. Off you pop, joy sucker. Suck for joy. Not Game of the week. Okay, Mike. Are you ready to toot the first one? <laughs> It sounds like pillow fight. Yeah. I'm gonna go with playing the fool by pillow fight. Well done. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Well done. And in fact, they're gonna come up in spotlight. Oh, how marvelous! Oh, so we're gonna get them on in a few moments. That's Great. good. Yes. Well, before then, next one. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the thing tuned to the flops? It's not, no. Do 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 No, it wasn't. Is it, is it a pop song? It, it was popular music at the time. Oh. Um, I the, don't know. The name, of the, the, the name of the song begins with a P. And is the same word repeated twice. Pussy, pussy. Yes, pussy, pussy. Like a 60s, pussy, pussy. Yeah. Um, oh, I know. I, I, I only know because of the conversation we've had earlier. Is it? Is it Edith Piaf and Padam Padam? It was. Well game? done, you. Nobody's ever heard of that apart from you. When you're having a sad cry wank in the bath and it's playing on the background. I think you'll find I have a, a cry wank to careless whisper. <laughs> no, we're never gonna meet again. Anyway. Right, next one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, start to cry. Can you guess what it is? No. Kells Whisper by George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> something, something. Da -da -da -da, and the good times all roll out. Oh, 
The cokey pokey. <laughs> oh, the hokey pokey. <laughs> I don't know it. Take your mama out by his sister. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. The hokey pokey remix. Yes. <laughs> 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 I don't know. The powers are not with me today. Kiss his heart. I'll give you a hint. You good to burn. Oh, it's Spice Girls. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Correct, yes. <laughs> Do do be do do. Oh, oh, I only got it because the, the gallery is singing, gallery along. Is singing yeah, yeah. along to it. What is, is it? it? Is it Euphoria by Lorene? It, it's indeed Euphoria by Lorene. Oh, Euphoria. <laughs> That's what I heard in my ear. <laughs> yeah. Um. She's got it, baby. She's got it. It's um, Venus by Banana Rama. Correct. Well done. Yay! I don't know. Crying at the discotheque by Alcazar. Oh, okay. That didn't sound like it, but you know, whatever. Yeah, well, it did, really. Okay. You're not going to get much of this. Oh. <laughs> Is it is it the theme from no. the Hovis advert where the boy what do 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 there's something wrong with this crack pipe. Bit of crack in your pipe. <laughs> there we go. My, my ring was too tight. <laughs> It's the theme tune for that's the home the theme, phase. Yeah, that's yeah. not what I was doing. I got it right. Thanks. Next one. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So that, that was that one. I don't know. I don't know it. I don't know. Can anybody find me somebody to love? Do, 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 do. Oh, was it Queen? It was Queen. I don't yeah. like them. Overrated. Controversial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bit of gallery, we've got it. 
Is it? <laughs> Waiting for the is gallery it? to get to the corner so you know what it is. is it yeah, yeah. CC Peniston. <laughs> and finally. That's exactly what it is. Uh, it's a shame when you have to wait for them to get to the bit you know, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Is it Bar Bar Black Sheep? Nope, it was not Bar Bar Black Sheep. I don't know it though. It was from a lady from up north, used to be in Girls Aloud. Lisa Stansfield? No. Lisa Stansfield was it in Girls Aloud? Maybe. <laughs> that was Maybe. If she was, you just couldn't see her. Um, she's in the background. She's in the back backing vocals. with her. With her. <laughs> she used. <laughs> she's from up north. Yeah. Is it? Is it Cheryl Cole? It's, no, it's just Cheryl. Is it Missy Lil Reen? Got Paulson in the shop. Noon. Um, was it uh, any of her songs? It was one of her songs. Fight yeah. for this love. No, call my name. Oh, that's the end though, isn't it? Because the time's run out. No, I've got one more. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? As soon as the gallery get it, they scream it down my ear and it's off. I think that is uh -huh. that gay classic, uh -huh. It's Raining Men by The Weather Girls. It's the Jerry Halliwell version, actually. No. Yeah, Sorry. Oh. See? After this quick break, we will be welcoming to the studio Canadian band Pillow Fight from Canada. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. This week we are joined by Pillow Fight, who have flown all the way from Halifax, Nova Scotia, just to see us. Oh, and something about a European tour. So let's get to know them in Spotlight. <laughs> So welcome to the art folk duo Art Ross and Aaron Green. Hi. How are you? Thanks for having Hello. us. Absolute pleasure. So yeah, we, we said that you've flown all the way here just for us, but you, you're on a tour really, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, we really just wanted to be here, but um, we also have a tour, yes. Um, we're, we're on tour for the next seven weeks. We're two weeks in. We're, yeah, we're about two and a half weeks in at this point. Yeah, I've already, I don't have any clothes left and it's only been two weeks, so. Primark. That's what people are saying. <laughs> what they call it, Primarni? Primarni, Primarni. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Suitcase full for about £20. What? Yeah, Damn. it's it's true. So you were Scotland yesterday. Yeah. Dunfermline? Dunfermline, yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you find that? We were a little sceptical um, just because we don't really know what kind of small city, what they're going to think of our music because mm. it's so like... Uh, openly queer and openly pretty depressing and so we know that in the inner cities um, we do usually a lot better but um, Dunfermline was really really kind to us and there were a few queer kids that came so that was really nice Great. so what kind of what kind of music would you describe your, your, your art as um, we're kind of we call it alt folk pop I guess because uh, we I don't know we listen to a lot of like Phoebe Bridgers and Soccer Mommy and stuff like that get a lot of influence like that but I'm still kind of a classic rock guy too so there's a little bit of guitar playing happening I in there I give him his moment yeah I get, <laughs> every three songs I get to do a little frilly bit and, and then uh, it's always like the men in the crowd they're like yes yes bro <laughs> yes. that's how we get the dads in they, uh, they play a couple of guitar solos and they're and they're sold so, uh, so that's how you get dads in i need to make a note of that yeah, yeah oh, you play some got guitar got licks yeah. Yeah. dads love it we have your cd here yeah we released that so we're actually kind of a we're a, a baby band we've only been playing for uh two years now okay. we started during the pandemic when there was literally nothing else to do um and so we just got together and uh we're obviously isolating um kind of at each other's houses together. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just cranked out like 40 songs and on there there's a few of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have had a look at your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a vibe in the videos. 
What's that vibe? Kind of, it's very, I want to say ethereal type. Ooh, I love that. Do you like that? <laughs> I do. You can use that on the, on the next CD. Okay, Go great. Right in the bio. <laughs> Go right in the bio. Quote <laughs> well, on our press stuff from you. Yeah, I, the, the one where you're in the bath together, fully dressed. Yep, yep, yep. That was, that was a vibe. That um, that music video, um, so it's, uh, it's for our song, our song Spilt Milk. And Spilt Milk was when I was like just really, really... Um, uh, sad. I had a um, a fight with my ex partner, and uh, I just invited Aaron over, and he just wallowed in sadness with me. And I feel like that is what friendship is. Yeah, sometimes you don't need people to go. Come on, let's cheer up. Yeah, I'm it's... like, we're gonna drink vodka. Have you explored any of the kind of LGBT areas? Every uh, every place we go. So obviously we're on tour, and every new place, um, I always always try and. Each one, I go and have a beer or a coffee there just to see what's up. We haven't gone out, out, out yet right. to um, do shots. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's always really nice to see the different um, the differences in gay culture in different mm. cities. And especially, obviously, I'm trying to find, like, you know, uh, lesbians, non-binary people. And maybe more of, like, a, a coffee house kind of vibe mm. or somewhere that, like... Alanis Morissette would have played, um, <laughs> but um, but yeah. Um, and we did spend uh, the Great Escape in Brighton. Yeah. And, uh, we yeah. you have family there, so whenever we can, we like to go down to Brighton and hang out because it feels a lot like home there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's got a different kind of vibe to a lot of places in the UK. It does. Brighton. It's um, it kind of, it's very like open like everyone's a little freaky <laughs> yeah Brighton's always really great to us it's um it's kind of great to have uh to be an openly queer band because the we found that our community and our fans are super super loyal and they I think that they um resonate to a lot of our lyrics because we are openly talking about you know sapphic love and romance mm. and um and heartbreak so mm. it's I don't think it's really seen that much in like pop we don't know a huge amount about the sort of gay culture in Canada. We kind of get Canada's Drag Race, and that's sure. as much as we get. Brooklyn Heights. What, yeah, Brooklyn Heights. What, and But they seem to be, like, far away from each other. Yeah. From where the weather. So what is it like? In, what's the gay scene like in Canada? Well, we have, we have a lot of geography in Canada. And uh, I think... I'm not sure exactly what it's like here, but you can kind of follow the electoral maps to see the liberal places are in yeah. the big cities. And then as you get further out in the countryside where maybe it's a little more religious or a little more traditional, yeah. not so much. So we live in the north end of Halifax, yeah. which is just like a... I think it might have the most trans folks per capita in Canada. The gayborhood, I think that's what they're Yeah, about. and yeah. it's just like a beautiful little bubble of just folks like us, and then, but sometimes it's, you go an hour down the road and they're protesting a drag brunch and yeah. stuff like that, which would never happen in our community. Like, that's what everyone's mm -hmm. doing every Sunday. Like, mm -hmm. so it's, it's kind of uh, sectioned off a little bit, but yeah. I really have enjoyed um, going and playing these shows in some places, and you get to see like the little queer kids coming out mm -hmm. and like yeah. seeing someone like them on stage, and like maybe in a community where there isn't people like mm -hmm. them or people who aren't who don't feel comfortable maybe coming out and identifying. And it's been, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been really nice, and we're just kind of like hoping it continues to spread out and uh, so everyone can kind of feel safe and welcome where they are. Really. How do you, so you, you, you're in, you're touring the UK, mm -hmm. do you kind of just like put a poster up, say we are playing here and then hope that people come? Or do you have like quite a solid mm. following of people that already know who you are? Well, because we're kind of a new band, we're kind of half and half. We're like, some people I think are, there's little hints. And especially, especially with the community, you give a poster to like a gay bar and then they tell, you know, 20 people, hopefully. Mm. So it's, we do our own promotion. Um, and so usually it's just me, like how I contacted you. And I was like, hey, we're just a band and we're here and we're gay. Can we come talk to you? <laughs> and that's pretty much how we've been getting a consistent um, following. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of people are slowly getting onto it. Uh, eventually we want to export to 
uh, to Europe, specifically the UK, because mm. there's just such a wonderful market here. Mm. Mm. And this is our first our first trip uh, to a lot of the places we're going. We've mm -hmm. so a lot of it's just like getting in, getting to know some folks, and then uh, trying to just like put on the best show possible. It's been mm. really nice to form those like bonds with audiences mm. coming here and just like. Probably. Share and yeah, there's a lot of your lyrics that people resonate with quite profoundly. So there's lots of hoops and hollers. Someone some has to say subjects. it. Do you get the lesbians in the front going, yes? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have we have one song um, and it's called Cellar Door. It's actually the first um, the first song on that EP, and the the lyric in the chorus is, uh, "Let's make breakfast and I'll give you head." And I um, I would say it to you know I would sing this to like whatever crowd, it's still mm. my song, it's still my truth. And then sometimes the people in the audience are like, did you just say, it's like, yeah, I did. And it should be talked about and it should be almost celebrated because I feel like, especially men in the music industry have been speaking about their sexuality for mm -hmm. ages. Yeah. And the second that I do it, people are like, oh my God. That's a bit, oh, what are you talking about? Yeah. And then you've got the juxtaposition of people like, Cardi B and the whole WAP thing, mm -hmm. and that's like so explicit, it's untrue. Yeah. But then kind of like going, ooh, oh my did God. you say we'll give head after breakfast? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've got people I know would be turning around, breakfast first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast <laughs> after, Not obviously. Yeah. 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 Breakfast you after. fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Just like put the eggs on, do it, and then come back. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but I think so, no, no, not for, twice. <laughs> very quick. <laughs> I think um, something that we do really well, I think, in Pillow Fight is um, we want to continue making it romantic. There's a specific uh, you're talking about ethereal and kind of mm. like dreamy and magical. Yeah. Um, I think because of the there's a lot of poetry and there's a lot of complex um, instrumentation because of Aaron. It it's more of like a yeah, it's more of like a poem, more of a a romantic, almost like a, a song to a lover. Mm. Um, you know, I think WAP is obviously great, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but to us, it's like, I wanna continue um, making it, uh, um, highlighting sapphic romance mm. more than anything. Mm. <laughs> so if people wait to find you on social media, how do they find you? Uh, they can find us on all the social medias. Um, our name is Pillow, F-I-T-E. To make it a little bit different, mm. um, Instagram, Facebook, anything that you can really get. TikTok, I had to make a TikTok. It's not great, um, but um, but it's uh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so just like you jumping up and down like doing star like that. No, I usually um, I usually you know take videos of my dog or like a song that I'm writing, and then you know on TikTok you always think that you're like oh I'm, this is the one that's gonna hit it. Yes, big. and then it's yeah. like. 10 people have seen it, and I'm like, <laughs> not this one. <laughs> but yeah, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Yeah. Cool. That's all for the show today. Remember, you can still keep in touch with us on our social medias at The Cud TV. The website is thecud.tv, and on podcasts and YouTube, just search for Chewing the Cud. That's Lee. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Art and Aaron for coming on, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. So yeah, um, we are drinking a food.